Hey, what's up? Yogi here. Um, believe it or not, I'm not in Florida. And it's gotten pretty warm up here. It's about uh, 83 degrees right now. Summer has arrived, I guess. So please, come along for the ride. Coming up to Eden, Eden, Wisconsin, birthplace of Jimmy Gantner from the Milwaukee Brewers teams of the 70s and 80s. One of the, I believe his whole career was in Milwaukee actually. He, he ended up spending his whole career here. Um, Robin Yount did. Uh, the only person that didn't was Paul Molitor. He ended up going to the Twins and he won a World Series with the Twins, so you know. <clears throat> Love him or hate him. It was like those three were like the core of that particular era of Brewers baseball that got him to the World Series in 82, which they eventually lost in seven games to the St. Louis Cardinals. And um, haven't been back since. Been close, but haven't been back since. I remember going to a clinic at Al Simmons Field, which is in Milwaukee, it's by Pulaski High School off of Oklahoma Avenue, about 22nd Oklahoma. And uh, there was a clinic back in uh, 81, 82. Um, don't remember our, if it was like a Mike Hegan clinic or, but uh, we ended up going down to it and uh, I had my glove, which I still have to this day. I had my glove signed by Yount, Cooper, Cooper. Yount, Cooper, Molitor, um, not sure if Gantner was there that day, but I did get two Hall of Famers on my glove, but I decided to keep using that glove and playing with it. So what ended up happening, the signatures wore off. We have entered pipe pipe and today I decided to uh, start uh, around Lake Winnebago trek so I'm on the eastern side the less traveled side <coughs> excuse me of Lake Winnebago there's Big Al Capone's pizza says closed, hopefully not for good. Here's Jim and Linda's Lakeview Supper Club, and it is quite a view. Right up along the lake shore here, on the eastern shores of Lake Winnebago. This looks like there's a little rain out there to the west. You know, the amazing thing about this lake is that it generally is about 15 feet deep, and the deepest part of the lake is around 21 feet. And it's such a huge lake. It's like 30 miles long and about 10 miles wide. And just knowing that it's just 21 feet deep is just mind boggling, you know? But this is cool. I don't think I can go up it though. I think it's closed. 
But imagine the view you could get from that. Woo wee! Actually, it looks open. Unfortunately, I have an issue with heights. Let me explain. It's, it's weird, okay? I don't have a problem going on roller coasters. I don't have a problem going on planes. But this kind of stuff, I can't stand. I can't stand climbing up something that open. I mean, I'll see how high I can get, but it's probably not going to be very high. I don't know. <laughs> it would be a great way to conquer my fear. But the question is, do I want to poo-poo myself in the process? It's called Columbia Park that I'm in right now. And this is the tower. You know, if they had... Oh, I just don't like this openness. This drives me nuts. If they had like an elevator that kind of took you up to the top and then you got out and it was enclosed. Ooh, there's some fish fighting over there or something. Fish spawning. Something's going on over there. Let's go check that out. There is something there in the water, splish splashing away. I think it's gone now. I think there was a fight to the finish and the finish happened. So again, I'm going up. You know, this isn't easy. I'll tell you what, I did go up back in 2011. I went up to the St. Augustine Lighthouse to the top of that. And man, oh man, I was hanging on to that thing for dear life up there. So I did conquer my fear that way, but it's a little different because it's um, in Holy crap, this whoa. Okay, we're going back down. Ooh. That thing just shifted on me. You want to get somebody afraid of heights to get off of that thing in a hurry? That'll do it. The grade I was on shifted. That one right there. Here, let me show you. That one right there. They should have that secure, man, because when I stepped over and that thing started shifting, <laughs> ooh, I damn near crapped my pants. Something is... That is a big fish. Ooh, wee. I was hoping I'd catch one of these somewhere, a wayside to pull into. That's a beautiful view. I'm glad it finally warmed up here in Wisconsin. And this is the view from the top part of the wayside. My car's down there. Very nice. Clouds, nice puffy clouds. There's a historical marker. I'm just north of Brothertown. There's an official marker here for the Brothertown Indians of Wisconsin. The Brothertown, Brotherton, are descendants of the Pequo and Mohegan, Algonquin for speaking tribes in the southern New England in southern New England. They became a tribe in 1769 when seven Christian and English speaking communities organized and moved to land in upstate New York. They cleared the land, planted fields, and built houses while under intense pressure to again move west. The brother town joined their neighbors, the Oneida and the Stockbridge, and planned to move to Wisconsin. The Brothertown purchased land near Kakana, which the United States government exchanged for the land called Brothertown Township in Calumet County. 
five groups of the Brotherton arrived in Wisconsin on ships at the port of Green Bay between 1831 and 1836. Upon arrival, the brother towns cleared land and began farming after building a church near Jericho. Today, the brother town remain a culturally distinct Indian community of about 24, uh, 2400, 2400, with the largest concentration residing in the Fond du Lac area. <laughs> it's really, really hard to read something and you hear the road farts going on behind you. I call them road farts. Dare I say breathtaking? They really should get a couple picnic tables out here. Let you relax, have lunch. Maybe they do, I don't know. Maybe because of COVID. They don't uh, have anything out right now. But I love that view. Beautiful. The back roads is where it's at. It doesn't have to be all freeway all the time. Actually, when I said before I wasn't sure if I was on 151, it's veering off right here. So this right up here is 151, which will take you into like Manitowoc. And staying on here, which I'm going to drive up a little bit more. I'm not taking uh, 151, but I'm going to just keep going straight up here, and that's 55, which will eventually take you in uh, Appleton. So I did not get far at all from where I last talked to you which was the overlook with the brother town Indians and man oh man I saw this and I had to stop as you know or might not know I'm a fan of stuff that's frozen in time of buildings old decrepit buildings that are no longer in use might as well document them now because if you don't They'll never be around. They get torn down. You'll be sitting there going, man, I wish I would have videotaped that. Put that in a vlog so people could see it. Look at that place. That is creepy. That is old. That is neato. Expanding my repertoire. As you can tell, it's got a gate up, no trespassing, and I had no intentions on trespassing, but neat. And then next to it, they got tin roofs, which are rusted. Love Shack, baby Love Shack. And uh, I don't know what this was, school? But it's like two buildings right next to each other. Oh, a garage. Huh. I'm right on the freeway or freeway highway highway 55 so yeah uh, it was a house that turned into a factory at some point and now it's been abandoned and from the looks of it it's been abandoned for quite a while we'll probably have really good reception though wow I was actually doing something on Facebook before I got off of Facebook for a couple years because of the craziness that is Facebook. So I had this thing called Abandoned Frozen in Time and I found a lot of places around where I live in West Bend that uh, I documented. A lot of them no longer exist. So I'm glad I got out there, got pictures and I was able to document it before it uh, Disappeared. Man, these trucks go flying by here. You know what this reminds me of? Pet cemetery. Keep Gage away from the road.
else I just filmed a little while ago. I'm in Calumetville and uh, there's Quirk. <laughs> Very, very quirky. I like it though. Very neat.